This is a look at a transverter given to me by the Northeast Radio Group. It's a 6 to 10 meter transverter built by VK3ALR. Antenna socket, the IF of 28 megahertz. Presumably receive and transmit LEDs. Oddly, a key socket, 12 volt power in, and a manual transmit receive switch. Having a look inside, there are three boards. Two of them are printed circuit board. They may well be commercially available kits. And then here on a bit of matrix board or very board is a homebrew relay circuit and a couple of transistors here so probably the control circuitry the receiver board just contains one IC and any 602 and the crystal um, can't easily see the frequency but I'm guessing it's 22 megahertz to convert 50 down to 28 so we've got a self-contained converter for the receive and the transmit oddly uses a second crystal and looking at the circuitry there are not many transistors in here at all just four so I'm guessing that the first transistor on the far right is a crystal oscillator second transistor might be your mixer and then the other two your driver and power amplifier so I doubt this would have more than say a few hundred milliwatts output the output tank circuit is a coil that is etched on the printed circuit board this transverter looks like it's had some work done to it it's probably not operational there's one loose wire here and you might be able to see down here another loose wire down here you might just be able to see it a glass germanium diode so I'm guessing that there's an RF sensor and when RF is detected that then flips over the relay although that doesn't explain the manual transmit and receive switch on the front and nor does it explain the key socket you might not be able to read it but the final transistor is a 2N3866 that's a maximum output of 1 watt but given the small number of stages I'm guessing the output would be more like 200 milliwatts the driver transistor you see here is a 2N222 and you can just see the other two transistors 2N3819 so it's a very simple four transistor transmitting converter now this lead I think it's meant to be soldered to the top of the crystal but that has come adrift just looking at the crystal it's a 25 megahertz crystal which is odd because I would have expected for a 10 to 6 meter transverter it would be a 22 megahertz crystal all has now been revealed it's not a full transverter at all instead it is a 6 meter CW transmitter uh, a design by G3RO who is well known in the GQRP club 1-1993 so the idea is that you would have your transmitter on CW and then it's been put in the same box as the receiving converter and this crystal almost certainly is 22 megahertz that also explains the key socket here the receiving converter appeared to work or at least I did get noise when I connected the antenna and more noise when I switched the converter on 
However, 6 metres is a very inactive band, and unless you're lucky, you won't hear amateur signals on it at any given time. I wasn't able to get any RF from the transmitter, but then when I looked at the relay board, underneath, as well as the loose wires on the top, just near my thumb there, you can also see a loose wire, which is the connection that goes into the transmitter. And just looking at this board, it is possibly not even a complete project. It's possibly better to rip the board out and rebuild it again. That is if I want to restore this project. And that's another point. Is it worth restoring something like this? A receiving converter for 50 through to 28 megahertz. That's fine. But the crystal controlled transmitter on one frequency is pretty much guaranteed not to get contacts. Especially the frequency where if it's using a 25 megahertz crystal then you might be able to get it to a bit above 25 like maybe 5 kilohertz or so above that so then you might be at 50.010 so the chance of someone actually hearing and replying to your call and you being crystal controlled is pretty much negligible it's not what I'd call a practical project the only use for this transmitter would be to use it as a beacon and bearing in mind that in Melbourne we don't have any active 6 meter beacons and if we do use it as a beacon that means that we no longer require either the control board or at least not in this form or the receive converter G3 R00 etched on the underside of the board was the clue that I needed. That call sign is owned by Ian who is very prominent in the GQRP club. So I posed a question on the GQRP club email list. A reply from John OH6FJS pointed me to a design in a magazine called DIY Radio. That was published in the 90s by the RSGB. This is the circuit. It's a little bit different than I thought with a two transistor Butler oscillator. You might see T1, which is tuned to 25 megahertz. And then the following stage, a 2N222, is a frequency doubler. That 50 megahertz signal then goes to a 2N3866. So the description is a little bit different to what I mentioned before. This is a clearer version of the circuit. Kits and boards were available from Kanga Products in the UK. The crystal is specified here. That would have been the most expensive part of the project. Not only was the transmitter described, but also the converter in an earlier issue. I won't talk about the circuit much. It's a very basic, very common NE602 base design. It was also available as a kit from Kanga Products. Simplified the wiring, so let's apply power and see if we can get a signal from the transmitter. About 400 to 500 milliwatts. And I'll just send a series of V's. And there is a little bit of chirp.
if we're going to have any hope of resurrecting this transmitter, we have to do something about the crystal and get something that produces an amateur band signal. I've added a crystal socket and instead of the 25 megahertz crystal, inserted one for 26.785. That is a fairly common XCB crystal. It's below the 27 megahertz part of the band, but it dates from when CB radios and walkie talkies were crystal controlled. And if you add 455 kilohertz to that, then you get the transmitting frequency that set would have operated on. This would have been a received crystal. The benefit in our case is that if you double it, it is within the 50 to 54 megahertz range of the 6 meter amateur band. I'm getting about 300 milliwatts output. A CW transmitter up above 53 megahertz doesn't have a lot of use. As a novelty though, you could potentially modulate it. My previous videos have used a TL431 voltage regulator and that's had good results as a modulator for an AM transmitter. To use it for this particular circuit, you would cut the supply rail to the final amplifier stage and apply your modulation there. You could keep the receive converter in. Potentially, if you removed the 22 MHz crystal and put in a 25 MHz crystal, then that will translate 53 megahertz down into the 10 meter amateur band. So you could still use it as a transmitter and receiving converter in the one box. 53 megahertz would line up with 28 megahertz and 54 as 29. More obtainable these days are crystals on exactly 27 megahertz. With that inserted, I'm getting just below 54. It's for projects like these that you should always hoard crystals. From that collection, there's a few in the 8.5 to 9 megahertz region that may be suitable for this CW transmitter to put it on a better frequency. This one is 8350, which comes out at 50.1, not a bad frequency. Of interest is the frequency is quite different to what the crystal multiplies up to. 50.036 as opposed to 50.100. Note though that the marking on the can for a crystal like this is the fundamental frequency. And in an oscillator like this, it is quite possible it is oscillating in overtone mode. The overtone mode of a crystal is not exactly three, five or seven times like a harmonic would be when I tune to near the crystal's marked frequency, I'm not hearing anything. Whereas up on 25 megahertz, where the oscillator really is operating, I am hearing a signal. This, I think, is as far as the project is going to get. A six meter CW transmitter, crystal controlled, with the converter. I've taken out the relay board, but instead of that, you could just have a manual transmit receive switch. Converting the switch from a single to a double pole would allow both the antenna and the power connections to be switched if necessary. Once again, thanks to the Northeast Radio Group for providing a project and source for the video. Details of the group are here.